Gather around, friends, new and old, and welcome to Roast and Toast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, David, and, and here we have our other two hosts, Jenny and Philip. I guess we didn't really talk about it before we started recording yeah. that we we put out a poll. I'm sure if you if you're a follower on our Instagram, you would have seen a poll. <laughs> Because we were deciding we didn't like the Campfire Collective, or we weren't married to the Campfire Collective, and we wanted something a little more catchy. Um, and uh, and I, th- I guess we landed on Roast and Toast, new name of the Roast podcast. And, and we, we weren't sure if we were going to introduce that today, so I decided, you know what? Screw it. Welcome to Roast and Toast. Next Woo! week, it'll be Mixed Berries featuring uh, David, <laughs> Jenny, and Philip. The following week, it'll be the TP Talks. Uh, you know, a- every week, it'll be just different. No, no kidding. Guys, guys, we, no. uh, this, this, this will last. This one will yeah, last. I we, think so. we just, none of, the yeah, none of us were, was, were, uh, was the intermediary. Yeah, at best. And uh, now dead at worst. But, <gasps> but Roast and Toast, very glad about it. I'm very excited for it. And we'll, uh, we'll be getting more into that as the, the weeks go in. Guys, I've had a doozy of a week, an absolute doozy. And it, it is also um, personified by a trip to the hospital. <gasps> I went to what? the hospital. Yes, I went to the hospital this week, and it's not as bad as it sounds. Unfortunately, I guess fortunately, uh, went to work. Penis enlargement, guys. They just said you can't go any bigger. <laughs> so what did you go to the hospital uh, for, Philip? <laughs> so I went to work. I went to work, fell off my bike when I braced my hands out to for a fall, and everybody said, "Oh my God, you fell off your motorcycle!" I said, "Oh, you sweet thing." No, I'm not that cool. I mean, bike, bike. They're like, oh, bicycle. <laughs> yes, yes, my bicycle. Uh, I bike to work. Uh, just, just completely biffed uh, a turn on the the sidewalk, and as I fell, braced myself with both my arms outstretched, as you should not do. Go limp like a noodle, my friends. Limp like a damn noodle. And I knew it as soon as I reached them out, but it was just instinct. Hurt my left forearm, and my God, it just hurts. And the only way I can rather like, that than your head, though. Yes, yes, you know, uh, my knees, uh, can't get on my knees for a while, you know, as, uh, you know, whatever, <laughs> they, they hurt as well. But uh, So you're going to be you're star right. fishing head. for the next uh, the next couple months yeah. of lovemaking. Exactly, exactly. So you know, this um, reminds I had to me go to the hospital. Of... Oh, sorry, continue. No, yeah, uh, nothing fractured, nothing sprained, just strained. Heard a pop, and the only thing that I can oh. uh, that that I can think of because it still hurts and it still throbs. It feels as if you ever get that 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 feeling whenever you're like your back is like a little tight, or maybe like your fingers are a little tight. And just you need a pop, uh, like to pop it back in place. It almost feels like it's freaking dislocated. I just need to like I'm, go- I'm I have a chiropractor yeah. scheduled. And I got to go pop that back back into place. Yikes. This does. Yeah. Uh, this reminds me of your bicycle thing. Reminds me of uh, so I roll into work sometimes, and I'm wearing like my black sneakers, my black jeans, black leather jacket, and I've got this black motorcycle helmet. And people are like, "Oh, you drive a motorcycle?" And I'm like, "No, it's a moped. <laughs> it's a scooter. <laughs> I'm not that cool." <laughs> oh yeah, no. Everybody, every single person. Cause I wasn't even trying. I mean, you just say bike. Like that's not a. It's not like. A, the dentist world of saying, oh, I'm a doctor. Everybody get out of the way. I'll perform a heart attack. No, I just, it's a bike. It is what it is. And then uh, everybody was like, every, at best, I got ambivalence. And at worst, I got massive judgment of like, oh, oh, uh, ER is this way, I guess. Go ahead and sign in. <laughs> uh, but any, can anybody, uh, anybody else got any newsworthy uh, notes of the week? Um, yes. Uh, Alien, my puppet show, is officially open. For the Phoenix yeah. public. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we opened on today, uh, recording on a Sunday, and we opened on Friday. It was a wonderful opening. We've had our first two audiences have been amazing. We all know we're, we're all actors here. We all get through like a stressful tech week, and then finally opening night gets here, and you get to have an audience, and suddenly your perspective on the whole thing completely changes, and you just get this revival of energy all of a sudden. It's I will admit, I'm, I'll be honest on this podcast, this tech week has been very stressful, but once the audience got in, we all had this new energy, we all came together, it was, it was wonderful. 
If you're in the Phoenix area, please come see Alien. We run until June 3rd. If you if you have any questions about tickets, you're welcome to message us through our social media about it, and I should be able to get back to you. That's my news for the week. How about you, David? I have no news. I, I, I don't Zero? know. Not a whole lot that's interesting. Is Oh, it's warm. I mean, that's the news, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Weather is nice. Okay, that counts. From the weather from Netherlands Central, David Hoffman yeah, Phil, has come Phil, to you. I'm seeing the sun is out uh, here in the <laughs> Netherlands. <laughs> David, you are absolutely roasting and toasting over there. Uh, you are buns out, guns out. It is incredibly hot. Can you tell us, Ada, what Celsius is it over there currently? It's currently around 20 degrees Celsius, Phil. Ooh, and, uh, ooh. and the roads are packed. People heading to the beach. Back to you. As I lay here next to my bed... I want you both to call me the word bed. What? <laughs> oh, sorry. Wait, what? I was just coming up. With, I was just coming up with oh, random yeah. ass okay, names no, I just that, got it. that have, yeah, that I have just no, got it. yeah, and have absolute no merit towards anything. And, and as it we was, have a character it, named floor, that, uh, that is a real character that has yep. real grounding within the, uh, the, <laughs> the film that yeah, we are reviewing this um, week. What, what would be your, your innocuous, uh, yeah, your innocuous names to be, to, re- to review while you're taking this review? What's, what's going to be your name, David? I guess, uh, you can call me Mike cause I Mike? sit in front of a mic once a week. Yep. Fair enough. Jenny, what's your name? What's your review name? I'm wearing a bandana. Oh. So let's, let's, my name for this review shall be bandana. First name band. Last name, Anna. Yes, sir. Ooh. Coming at you hot and heavy. You've got Bed, Mike, and Bandana going to be reviewing Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy Volume 3, Gunning into Theaters. Already, we are going to be, by the time you hear this, we'll have already had opening weekend. Mm-hmm. And um, lots of things to get to. But, of course, we would be remiss if we did not go directly to Mike's big, bad, silly, super short review and synopsis of of the entire and summary of the entire film. Mike, this is a hard it's a hard movie to summarize. I'm I'm yes. going to be honest, but I, I gave it a go. I tried to be as broad and as non specific as possible. All right, here we go. In a galaxy not so far away, some familiar faces still mourn loved ones lost. We rejoin our Guardians of the Galaxy living their space lives in a new community of Ravagers. When an enemy attacks and Rocket Raccoon is injured in battle, the team must race across space to track down his creator to save his life. The team once again finds themselves defending the innocent, but this time against a darker and more sinister foe. The people of the galaxy are about to find a bite about to find out about. what happens when you try to play God. Very nice. Ooh. Very nicely done there, Mike. Very nice. All okay, right. We, my name yeah. is David. Can we go back to that? Can we go back to you want that? You don't want to go to P183 or whatever. <laughs> I, just, I just don't want to confuse the listeners. Fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> Mike was 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 very good. That was a, a name within a name. All right. Um. Guys, where where I I think as well with uh, with any Guardians of the Galaxy film, it's probably most appropriate to talk about the acting performances first, since it's such a character driven narrative in in any of the three volumes. I think that that's probably the fairest. I guess I guess let's let's start out where 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 we most should start out here. Chris Pratt as Star Lord um, is probably at the the top, along with Rocket Raccoon, probably taking the the narrative forward. Which is funny because not many lines, and it's not even necessarily the Rocket Raccoon we're familiar with. It's it's a Rocket Raccoon growing up. So those two would probably be at the main uh, if we're excluding the villains, uh, guys. Uh, who were highlight performances for you, Jenny? Who who really stood out to you this film? My heart always goes to Mantis. She is such a well-loved character, and I just get tickled every time something comes out of her mouth. Like She's just hilarious all the time, but also the sweetest, kindest creature on this entire, in this entire cinematic universe. Galaxy. Um, yeah. Oh, there we go. That's the galaxy, exactly. Um, I also do always have a, a soft spot for Drax. He's hilarious all the time as well. And it's always so cool to see Dave Bautista um, serving his acting chops and 
delivering this character that has so much heart and is so gruff at the same time. So those two are my personal favorite. David, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a lot of whenever we review these acting performances, it's just going to go down to who's your favorite guardian, right? Because I, I think everybody, it's almost impossible to say Drax or Dave Bautista as Drax is not just a favorite. He's just so good. He th- This was a role, I don't want to say he was born to play, but my God. I think the God, character what, is really good. I, th- just I think the really, character is really good. I don't, think, I don't think there's anything that impressive going on acting wise, to be, I still to be think perfectly that honest. Though, it was it was a strong choice, especially to start out with. Um, but but either way, so yeah, so I mean, where I would think you? It's fine. I think the character the character creation is fantastic. But I, I don't know. None, none of these performances are are particularly uh, inspiring. It's hard to judge voice acting because at the end of the day, Bradley Cooper is only voice acting uh, for this role. I don't know how much of the mocap he did, if at anything, probably none. But I might be wrong about that. Well, how about in this case, let me ask you, David, how do we feel the villain did and in this movie? How did this how what do you, what did you think of the high evolutionary? Did his uh, did adding him to the universe do something interesting for you? How was his performance and how did it work it was with fresh. the Guardians? The the mm-hmm. character was fresh. I I thought he did fine as, as an actor. The performance was was good. Yeah, I, I I thought it was quite good. No 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 flaws. Again, I don't think there was anything that impressive going on across the board throughout the film, acting wise. That's just how I. Nothing necessarily wrong with it. Just nothing amazing. Uh, as as far as a character, it's weird that that character exists and we haven't encountered in with all the Thanos stuff that happened in this in this cinematic universe that we haven't encountered this character before. If he's so influential and so, you know, like has been doing this stuff for decades or centuries or however long, uh, weird that we haven't encountered him before. It's, it's nice and fresh, but at the same time I was like, yeah, it felt a little, maybe a little too unfamiliar, a little too like, Okay, now this character exists. I thought it was a tremendous performance, Jenny, uh, as far as the high evolutionary is concerned. I thought it was a, a really, really varied and honestly, uh, amongst the best villains we've seen, uh, certainly certainly in the new phase, and I'd even say certainly in phase four. I would have said it was very generic as, as a villain. Really, I thought that I thought that there was a lot of a varied emotion, both in prior to um, again. We're, we're this entire thing is going to be spoiler alert. So if you have not seen Guardians of the Galaxy three, just realize that we will be spoiling a lot just in in talks. But I thought that there was a mm. different tones of performances both before and after uh, the moment that Rocket attacked uh, the High Evolutionary directly. I thought that there were two different plays. I saw we saw a descent into madness, or at least a descent from where point A was for him where he was fully asserted and then point b where he was becoming slowly and more so unhinged i thought that there was a a a clear point a and a clear point d by the point we got to the end of of what have you and i think it's also important to notice guy or to note guys that there's not just one villain in this and i think that that's that was honestly going to be my biggest critique of the entire film when we do a full review there's a second villain quote unquote in this film it's will poulter as adam warlock and <laughs> and and while i thought it was a perfectly fine performance because i think we've we've seen a lot of the times big dumb baddies this didn't feel like a big dumb baddie and 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 i know it, it it's a subtle difference of a childlike innocence childlike innocence for um for a baddie which which was quite different um and i thought it was a fine uh performance by will poulter um i thought it was it's it'll be interesting to see where and what the mcu uses him for going forward but story wise was i was i think just as much as drax and vin and uh and dave batista were simpatico and that and that's really um was all in line with the entire guardians of the galaxy franchise i thought will poulter and adam warlock while a fine performance was just written sort of shoehorned and it felt really really just that's, that, that's oh, we'll why that's why I, I i or i sort of scowled when you said that there's a second villain i wouldn't like he was just a, a side character he wasn't a really it's a, a nuisance villain in the story yeah i can't certainly really sure but yeah he's no more a villain than jabba the hut is in star wars or or what about like um yeah i mean I, he's I, a, I foe, would, I would, a foe a but foe. not the the villain in the story he's not the 
the bad guy, you know, in this story by any means, by any stretch. And I did actually think uh, his performance was quite good. Actually, now that I had forgotten about him, but uh, I have <laughs> soft isn't that part of Will the problem? Because I I met him at a party once, and it was fun. Oh, oh really? Have a chat with Will Poulter. No, I think I thought I thought uh, his performance was fun and and entertaining and and cracked the jokes that that didn't feel too cheesy because it worked for his character. Whereas sometimes like. Mantis and Drax are ca- cracking jokes that I know that they have very quirky characters, but sometimes it just goes so far that it kind of takes me out of the illusion of the film, mm-hmm. which is one of the biggest criticisms for Marvel in the last seven years is a little too much joke cracking. Jenny, did you did you do you sympathize with me that it felt very shoehorned to have Adam Warlock as a character forced in here? Uh, did yeah. that ring true with you at all? It it did kind of feel that way for me too, because I was expecting Adam Morlock to be a more prominent villain. It felt like there was so much talk about several years ago when they were originally creating the mo- like they were discussing creating the film. They made it seem like he was going to be this big villain for this movie, and he he was he was there, but he wasn't like there there. The High Evolutionary suddenly was this prominent villain and he is kind of the side character he was apparently supposed to be in volume two also adam warlock but they yeah, decided he was. to he was in the end credit scene oh that's of. right he was he definitely was oh my gosh yeah. wait it's so been... uh, did you yeah. guys both know adam warlock from the comics or something because i never heard of him yeah he's in in if we're going to be full <laughs> let me put on my glasses if we're gonna go full nerd alert here whenever uh in the comics the infinity war saga is actually more I'm pause so you right at- there pause you right there if anyone is still listening to this episode at this point they're also nerds probably so go right ahead and be nerdy there it is no Thank apology you. necessary there it is i redact i redact i will put my nerd alert back in my in my pot back pocket um the infinity war saga in the comics uh that takes place in the comics uh for marvel is actually mostly waged uh, a war is waged mostly with thanos and adam warlock he's probably the the biggest protagonist to face thanos in that oh. it's not it's not like like in the comics uh iron man doesn't die there's like subtle differences like that and of course adam warlock was not introduced by the time that end game came along or something so so that's partly why the prominence wasn't there so yes he is a rather prominent member of the mcu and especially in the pi- power hierarchy he's um how would you say he's probably like the black adam of uh, the mcu jk but no no no. he is really powerful and uh he's a prominent member of the mcu he's amongst he's certainly more prominent than the guardians as a whole is in the mcu or at least before before the guardians of the galaxy movie franchise really took off guys i think whenever we're talking about guardians of the galaxy movie a huge part a huge portion of of any of those films which because they're just married together they're seen together is going to be the music selection. We moved past, I guess, the 70s, which would be volume one. Uh, volume two was mostly 80s. And this this one, as we see Rocket Raccoon open up the film, we see a 90s selection of, of, of music that uh, fe- is featured prominently throughout the film. David, did it enhance the experience for you? Did it did it marry itself well to the most of the movie? Uh, what what are your thoughts on this iteration of music and music selection? As I think it's very important for this particular film franchise. I don't think the '90s are as iconic as the '70s and '80s. Unfortunately, even even with that being said, I don't think they necessarily chose the best songs. I don't think they either. chose the They're right like, ones. Like <gasps> there, there were some good ones. Like like the the way it opens up with uh, "Creep" by Radiohead is is great. Like, I thought that was like, I was like, okay, cool. I'm getting into this. But like throughout the movie, the music was nowhere near as iconic, you know, Agreed. like as it was in, in the first two movies, especially exactly. the second movie. Like Guardians 2, that soundtrack, I still listen to that soundtrack sometimes. Like, it's just so good. Guys, can we get over whatever the, the Beastie Boys Brooklyn song is? I feel like I've seen that in like at least three. You guys saw, we, we you guys discussed Super Mario Bros. It's in there. It was in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. 
There was also a recent movie that came out somewhat else that also featured it. Can we get over going to Brooklyn? I get it, guys. Anytime we say the word freaking Brooklyn, we got to we got to go to the Beastie Boys. Marky Mark's got to, you know, got to have us. It's freaking ridiculous. <laughs> Jenny, uh, did you did you enjoy the tunes this this one or, or are you also also uh, head in head in uh, head in hand in with the David on it? I'm I'm in the same boat. I I honestly forgot that Creep was even a part of the film. There was not a single song that really stood out to me that I was like, yes, absolutely, let's do this. I I couldn't tell you what other songs there were. There were just yeah, like, nothing that I... Like volume two, uh, The Chain by Fleetwood Mac, like so, so iconic. And the way it was used as well uh, was, was more, I don't know, they used it earlier in the film and then they brought it back at the climax. So awesome. This, I don't, I like, I don't, nothing jumped out at even, me like that. Even in volume two, when we open up and it's, um, oh God, what's her name? Brandy. She's a Brandy. Excuse me. Sorry. Not yeah, Brandy. Brandy. Uh, Brandy. Like I, I remember that. Like there's a lot of iconic moments that get married. Yeah. Obviously, um, when the whole, the whole fight scene goes on and, and that has music married to it. This one, it felt like music was the least important it has been in the franchise because of the 90s and i almost wonder i almost wonder and i i bet that somebody's going to be doing a report on this but i almost wonder if because they've used a lot of prominent 90s music within the movies the mcu movies that have kind of married themselves to other films i wonder if that's why they weren't able to do it like think of like acdc like they're they're kind of in the '90s, right? And and you think, of, but Iron Man's really taken off over all of that ACDC yeah. stuff. That that would probably be in those rock mantras that that would be in a lot of those uh, really high intense octane scenes. And I, I I bet that there's a lot of that that they really kind of were limited to being like, well, what have has the MCU not used that's not identified with another MCU franchise? Yeah, I have a question for you guys. To what extent do you think? Do you think? the music drove the the mood of the film because the 90s generally like you associate more with like nirvana that grungy dark music and this movie took a very very a much darker tone than the first uh, two yeah it oh did. certainly yeah <laughs> I, I'll be honest with you guys. I was not a fan of all of the animal torture in this. Uh, spoilers. Mm-hmm. Um, I did. I had a really hard time watching certain scenes of this movie because I love animals quite a bit. And seeing or even thinking of these animals being tortured or engineered on just it. I had to close my eyes a couple of times. And I'm the horror fan here. I I, I can usually handle a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, that, that surprises was like, me greatly. It's like, I don't really want to see a bunny rabbit with a bear trap for a mouth walking around like a spider. I just don't want to see that. Like, that just, that makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> but the characters were cute. The little, the little characters they for these animals that they generated to be uh, Rocket's friends in his backstory I thought they were all super cute and I fell in love with them. So I'm sorry that happened to you little creatures, but you're so cute. I think, David, uh, to go back to what you said, I think that the music really generated emotions most effectively. Like it it really set you in the mood. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'd say that it, it did that most effectively in the bookends of the film. I'd say at the beginning, whenever you said yeah, like creep, sure. whenever we yeah. bring, I'd say that that was most effective. And I'll be honest, at first I didn't like it, but then I, I settled in to uh, the dog days are over and then eventually gave in to a, to a light happier. And I think it really generated the appropriate tone. But in between, not once, not, not I, I, I could much. be wrong. You could say something. Yeah, you could say something and then I'll be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, maybe there. But especially like back to Brooklyn. Nothing, and, and yeah, nothing fight. jumps out nothing, though, right? Nothing, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. No iconic moment that that we normally are used to used to having, but or at least from the first two films, uh, nothing there. The uh, the prosthetics in this film kind of reminded me of like eighties or nineties fantasy or horror film. Like, did you guys ever watch Willow? Yeah. Uh, no, actually, yeah. I haven't seen it. Like the 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 animal people in this movie kind of reminded <laughs> me of that pig scene in Willow. Do you not think like? It's just kind of gross bit, to yeah. look at. Like you just kind of don't want to look at it. That it was really interesting the, the 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 style chosen for this film. Not necessarily that it that it was that it made the film better at all. Really, like I, I did enjoy the film overall, but 
yeah, such a such a weird, like a weird what? Like I walked out of the seminar and I was like, that was kind of weird. Also, can we talk about the cheese factor? Man, that was so much, so many cheesy <laughs> moments. Too much. There were a Too lot of me. emotional moments. A lot of emotion. I thought, you know what? I'm going to disagree with you, friend. David. I disagree with you, buddy. I think that as for as many as there were, and there were probably like, I, I lost count, to be honest with you. For as many as there were, probably like eight, let's say, let's just put a number on it, eight. I thought that a seven of those eight worked. It was the seventh one that didn't work, which for me was the, it was taken as a joke. So therefore it, it self cut itself to the, to the knees, but the, the Will Poulter, Adam Warlock adding his little hug at the end to, to the group who had just saved all the animals, all the children, all the beings of the universe, everybody who was evil that came across on board and was accepted at the Ravagers. I thought that that moment was probably the biggest cheese that did not work for me. That was just like, all right, I get it. Fine. Like, just, really? let's, let's keep going. That was about the only one. Every yeah, other one for me with worked. you there as well. That didn't even that feel one cheesy to me. It just felt a little silly. The, I'm talking like, how do we open up this podcast or this main topic? At least we we were talking about the name thing. It's it's like when it's like when uh, the the movie Solo, a Star Wars story, whatever it was called, Solo, uh, the Han Solo movie. Wh- like yeah. they felt the need to explain the origins of all these things. Like, oh, this is where the dice that hang from the Millennium Falcon came from, and this felt the need to explain where this guy got his his the name Rocket from, and I it was it was way too cheesy for me the and and on top of that the when rocket was growing up we it's still bradley cooper doing the voice right but they made his voice sound kind of like a child and that was a little too much for me as well that was a lot (laughs) i I couldn't take it seriously i couldn't they should have just cast a kid or someone who does kids voices to do the voice baby Rocket rocket has is accredited with a different voice Noah Raskin. Well, then they tried to make him sound too much like Bradley Cooper. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I didn't like it. I, uh, I a lot of the rocket scenes in this movie, all the flashback scenes, I did they didn't not work enjoy. for you. You didn't they enjoy did not, those. No. What? No. See, okay. So no, here's with the thing: all the animals I, and the thing, and it, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I've seen it so many times. Like I've seen those kinds of things so many times. It like it didn't feel fresh. It didn't feel real. It it felt forced. Yeah, no. I, I I'm so sorry, Jenny. Let me just I just I I think that for me those background scenes, those going back to the past. If anything, I think that they just set up the villain, which I think was an interesting interesting True. tactic. And I thought that it worked that does, effectively. Yeah, that does work. I would say, like, what's funny is that even though Rocky was at the focal point for a lot of that, I thought that it was actually to the to the benefit of the villain who <laughs> I know we didn't really talk True. about it, um, but this is honestly like the most dastardly villain we've ever seen in the MCU. And certainly uh, this side of Thanos actually being successful in the snap has like the highest body count blew up on an entire planet. My goodness. He went full star Wars, death star, planet star blowing up the entire planet and being successful guy has the highest body count that we've seen in the entire MCU. And, and, and to somehow say like, he's not the biggest Besides- villain. Tony Stark. Oh yeah, yeah, no kidding. Tony, Tony's <laughs> Tony's a dealer of destruction. Body, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, uh, Jenny, did you think that that the the background, um, no, the the fact that we had two uh, two separate storylines and we had just all these moments of of I think everybody can agree that there were at least like eight prominent like all right, this is when you need to feel sad moments. Did the vast quantity take away from the quality of each one of those for you i didn't think we needed to have as many scenes with rocket's backstory than there were i feel like the the movie was let's let's be honest the movie was two hours and 30 minutes long there was it kind of it felt like it. it it did feel like that yes we they could have easily cut at least one to two scenes of him bonding with the animals we could have there could have been one or two moments with a high evolutionary they could have cut i think there was just too much happening of these two stories we didn't need as much plot generation of rocket's backstory in my opinion i i don't don't think it was necessary to have so much content from that story in this film there were two choices when we talk about this story. So we're going to, we'll just state whether or not we liked the, the movie as, as a whole, but specifically talking about the story, did you guys 
uh, Jenny's already said that she did not, <laughs> she did not think a lot of the backstory was necessary. It could have been cut. Like when, when you trim the fat of this film, that's where she would have taken it from. David, did mm-hmm. you, did you think that the the dual storylines worked for you in this film? Uh, yeah, I think I agree with Jenny that uh, some of it definitely could have been cut. I don't think I think they were just with, with the scene with the four friends in the cage and, you know, with the mangled animals mm-hmm. I, that felt like they were just trying to tug on heartstrings for like cuteness, a sympathy factor. It didn't feel like it really drove the story. You could have cut that whole bit out, all of it, and you barely would have changed the movie because you still would have gotten all the, the expositional stuff with the with the the what's his name the high evolutionary, high evolutionary and rocket and all that and you still could have had rocket at the end with with all the little the unmutated animals he could have still had his moment there with them and like no we're going to free all the living creatures uh all of that could have happened and you wouldn't have needed all that nonsense in the cages it didn't it did not tug on my heart heartstrings cuz I saw straight straight through it. Like it just didn't feel real to me. Too much cheesiness. So cut out a whole chunk, twenty minutes of the movie, maybe, and and movie would have been fine, and a hell of a lot more enjoyable runtime wise. I will say I did quite enjoy the fact that one of these friends was an otter. <laughs> otter. I saw I saw the otter on the screen. And I was like, yes, yes. There's an otter. I thought of you guys instantly as yeah. soon as I saw the otter. I was like, oh no, we're gonna mention this this weekend. Yes, of course, of course we did. God bless you, Jenny, for for pointing it out. <laughs> okay. Oh, question, guys. I I saw the movie with a friend group, and I'm curious. At the end, we had a. Big discussion over this. Did you think that Rocket and the Otter, I forget her name now, but the Rocket Lila. and the Otter, what, Lila, thank you very much. Lila. How dare I forget. When they're in heaven or how whatever that is. The, uh, how dare you, the, sir. How dare I. Whenever they're in King's Crossing of, of Harry Potter lore, whenever they're in that heaven right. purgatory element, did they kiss? Or was it just because they have snouts no. that look like they kissed? That's just how animals like cuddle would up hug. to each other in, in, yeah. in movies when they're when the, when you're talking about like conscious animals who have like who are humanoid kind of things uh-huh. that's just how they they show their affection jenny did you think that they kissed i was reminded of the lion king and how lions kind of snuggle oh, can you feel the love tonight and the exactly. moment? I, but i it's i it's hard to say I would say there's definitely a bond no. between those two, but I don't I don't think there's a love connection there. I think there's just a bond of trauma there between right. those four. Trauma bonding. Okay, guys, we love guys, it. Final thoughts. Uh let's start with you, Philip. Would you see this move would you see this uh, I don't know. Would you recommend this movie to friends? Did you enjoy it? I don't think it stands alone. I would recommend it to anybody who wants to complete it. I think it's a worthy addition. I think it's the best. It would have been the best movie of Phase Four. Uh, so yes, I would say I would recommend it. I think it's a good film. Uh, in my rankings of the Guardians of the Galaxy films, it's my second favorite. Be- be- best movie Phase Four, so better than Spider Man No Way Home. I think as a story, actually, yes. Uh, when you look back at um, I, I when you look back at Spider Man, um, the story, if you act, like. Take out the fan, like it's all just fan service. There's not like a real solid story. A lot of the character motivations. Oh, I think the source I, story I, is is rock solid. Anyway, we, we won't go into that. It's right. a whole different yes. movie. It's a whole different <laughs> podcast. I disagree. Yes. Just we state can debate our disagreement. About that later. Jenny, Jenny, would you I, see this movie? Uh, sorry, would you recommend this movie? And did you like mm-hmm. it? I enjoyed the movie. I would recommend it. Would I see it again? Probably not, unless I was revisiting the entire MCU from Mm -hmm. chronological order that's probably the only reason i would watch it again but for people who are wanting to see it for the first time i would definitely say yes go see this movie i had a good time yeah got it i i would not necessarily be excited to watch this movie again i don't nothing nothing was that cool like not like no way home which i watched uh, at least another one time after seeing it the first time i would uh, i would recommend this movie to people who are marvel fans like if, if someone was like yeah, yeah. on their way out of the marvel universe like they're like not that into it anymore i'd be like yeah go see it go see this one before you before you lose lose all attachment to the marvel universe but uh, anyone who is not part of the not a fan of the marvel films i of course not of course i'm not going to recommend it i i enjoyed it but i didn't think it was that good like i thought it was good and no better well, something that is tremendously good 
are those Jenny facts that we get after each and every movie Whoa, review, Jenny. Whoa, hey, Jenny facts, all right. So this is the first MCU film out of the 32 in existence so far to have oh an God. uncensored F-bomb. That's right, yes. you heard it here. Chris Pratt drops the F-bomb uncensored in an MCU film. The level of audacity wow. and strength, damn. Do you have Jenny? Do you have there? What, what was there a censored one in a previous film? Um, you know what? I, I know, like, there's a few times where they like they've cut like halfway through the word, like there'd be like, Fuh, and then they cut to the next scene or something like that. I don't. Nothing comes to mind immediately, but I did when I was researching okay. trivia for this. They did consider Robert. I think I heard this. This is a rumor, or this was a fact. I'm not sure, but I think for Endgame. Robert Downey Jr. when he puts on the the chaos. I want to call it the chaos gem. That's so wrong. That's not thank you. The gauntlet. He puts it on. He I think he does say go F yourself. That was originally recorded. Oh, and wow. they wanted to, they <laughs> were trying to get it to use, but they decided to go against it. I think there was a legacy debate with the Russo brothers. So they ended up doing I am <sighs> Iron Man. But, I think it would have been so boss. Yeah. <laughs> go, go F yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I am inevitable. Yeah. Right. Go after yourself. <laughs> this this <laughs> this f bomb to to Nebula was not in the original script, but James Gunn told Chris Pratt to, "Hey, why don't you why don't you say it? Why don't you go for it?" And it was so funny. Every single test screening was every time it was heard, it was responded with thunderous applause and cheering and laughter. They just kept it in for the final release. It was applauded wow. in my theater. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I yeah. turned to the person I was with. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 set a world record for the most makeup appliances used in a single film with more than 23,000 prosthetics used what across. What if this gets an Oscar for that? I bet it I, could. I would hope it would. It could. It totally could. It's, yeah. like, it's like Black Panther getting nominated and I think winning for uh, – the original yeah, one, the for, first one, winning for costume design. It's like, it totally could. Didn't it win and this like, year too? It wouldn't be wrong. I don't know. I can't Didn't remember. it win? The, I think it did. I think it won. Not sure. Sorry. Sorry, Jenny. Well, these, these 23,000 prosthetics were used across more than 1,000 actors. And this beats the record mm. previously held by The Grinch. Jim Carrey's The Grinch. And it also wow. beats the 1,200 prosthetics record used for the first Guardians film. So... I would hope they get nominated for an Oscar for this work. At least the creativity with I mean, every it is really single interesting, yeah, interesting yeah. work, especially like on the on the work. part of the high evolutionary. Like some of that looked real, some of that no, like especially with on. the hanging, especially on the part of the animal human animal thingies. Like that is awesome work. I didn't like looking at it, but but it's still <laughs> awesome work. I think the high evolutionary is kind of we've seen stuff like that in in Marvel movies already. I'm very focused on the image of the crystal ravager whose face is made of crystals that always stands out to me he's it's really interesting to see final uh fact for this one i think it kind of applies to all of the guardians franchise um vin diesel has recorded all of his lines in several different languages at saying i am groot uh he's recorded in russian mandarin spanish portuguese german and french just so a groot (laughs) <laughs> and he, so he can use his real voice in the film all around the world in every version of it. And um, and that includes I am Groot, we are Groot, and <clears throat> spoiler alert, I love you guys. Yep, he says additional line at the end of this movie, oh, and it shocked we, me. We really should go over that. Did that work for you guys? And my friend group, it did not. We were, we were all kind of pissed about it. It was pretty cheesy for me personally. Yeah, that was, was cheesy. That was just- I didn't hate it. Because in my mind, I was like, okay, he's he normally speaks in his Groot language, whatever that is, and in this for that one moment, he decided to speak in English. I guess I don't know. Mm-hmm. So it yeah. kind of worked for me. I don't know. I it was it was, okay. it was silly. It was cute, but it was silly. It was no. It was no sillier than we are Groot, though. True. True. We're gonna do a round here. What are you guys missing? To my favorite pair of white Veja sneakers. You have been my favorite pair of sneakers the last two years, but you are so worn out now that the heels pop out every time I take them off. And that's saying something. 
So it's time to retire you, my friends. My beautiful white pair of sneakers, you will be missed. You will be missed, the hair of youth. Now I'm not saying I'm going bald, but my hairline has changed, and it's <sighs> formed a kind of slight widow's peak, and I feel <sighs> old now. So, uh, the hair of my youth, you will be missed. <sighs> Look, I, again, I'm not going bald, okay? Like, I really don't think no, I am. No, it's not man. in my genes. <laughs> I've looked at, like, my mom's not. dad. He was not bald. But I just yeah, think, yeah. like, my hairline has changed a bit, and I don't like it. Yeah, you're not self-conscious about it at all, man. Winter, you will be missed. And the reason why is because my freaking AC in my car is broken yet again. It's a it's a ruthless and horrible record that keeps going and going and going. And you know what? It makes me moist when I drive somewhere with no AC. You don't like to hear it. I don't like to be it. Winter, you will be missed. Well, it's time for a game as we play every, or we try to play every week. I've got a game for you guys, which means that you guys, I guess, have some questions prepared for me. So let's uh, let's start there. I would like to start this pregame questioning with a very important one that might spark a debate. David, is a hot dog a sandwich? You have the floor. Oh. <laughs> 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 Uh, you know what? I, I honestly think that it is. Mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. it is a sandwich because what, what is a sandwich? Bread, uh, filler, bread. And so whether or not you cut the bread all the way through or is irrelevant, whether or not the bread is, is round or square or elongated is irrelevant. It's just filling inside two sides of bread. And mm -hmm. that is a sandwich. A burger is also a type of sandwich. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. yes, yes, a hot dog is a sandwich, and I don't think that there should be this much debate about it. No, I mean I I totally agree with you. There you go, Philip, hit me, <laughs> <laughs> David. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> David, David, I want you to actually think about this. Take it, take it as a serious question. I never think. Yeah, no, 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 please. For once in your damn life, think about this. Uh, what, is, <laughs> what is the most important tool slash piece of equipment, in your opinion, in, in the world, like in, in, in all of the world? And take it however you want to, however you want to accept the prompt. But what is the most important tool slash piece of equipment? It must be an actual physical thing. It can't be like, well, I think armed with comedy, I think you can accomplish anything. No, 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 no. An actual, <laughs> actual physical thing. But other than uh, that, confidence. You can go wherever you want. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, well, you asked me to be serious about this. If I'm really being serious about this, the most important tool would it would probably be a knife. You think yeah, so? I think. I mean, it's yeah. I, I mean, what can you accomplish without? without something sharp to cut things. If we're talking basic, like basic, you think that is basic, the most, or not, like the, not the computer. Cause I mean, we wouldn't have even gotten to the computer without like earlier tools. And, and what is the, the sort of the fundamental thing that allowed us to start to completely change the way society works as a blade before that, how do we kill an animal? We, you could try get lucky and strangle it to death. But, and when we start, stopped just eating berries and, and stuff like that, and we started eating meat is when we uh, human, humans started evolving uh, big time, especially in the brain, right? So I like the knife is fundamental. So that's my that's my thought. All right, well let's uh, let's play a little game. And I tried to theme it. Um, this is a multiple choice game. However, one question is not multiple choice. I will let you know when we get there. It'll be a buzz in um, quickest to answer. We'll get it right. Mm. This game is called, and I, I'm sorry to say that it has nothing to do with everything everywhere all at once, but it's called Raccoonie. <laughs> and we're going to be talking a little bit about raccoons. Oh, great. <laughs> First question, are you guys ready? Yeah. Oh, I've, I've never been more ready. Had this been an otter okay. game, we would have fought to the death, but raccoon's a, a fine yeah, second. I would never give you such a pleasure. <laughs> all right, the word raccoon comes from the... Powhatan word, it's a Native American language, Powhatan, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that word, Arukun, Arukun or something. Again, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I have to add that disclaimer in there. For what part of the body 
are raccoons named? So that's where the word comes from. But what part of the body are they mm-hmm. named? Is it A, the teeth, B, the hands, C, the tail, or D, the face? Philip, we'll go to you first. For me, it goes down to two teeth, options. hands, tail, face. I'm going to, I have to go with the, the face. Face. Jenny. I, I actually agree. Uh, I hear all this talk about raccoons having a very specific face. So that makes sense to me. Yeah. I say face. Be like, be like a penguin with the tuxedo. Like it's the most identifiable feature. Well, the word penguin may come from tuxedo. The word raccoon <laughs> does not come from their face. They are named for their hands. They are named for their hands. Uh. I can't remember what exactly it was. And I don't, the website's open on my phone. So I, I don't have that on me right now. So so basically the, the, the word arukun or whatever it's, however it's pronounced, uh, means like the hands that grab everything or something like that. So, oh, because um, the little And feet. interestingly mm-hmm. enough, the Aztecs had a similar word. They also had a name for raccoons that was different, but also meant the same thing effectively. They were also named for their their ability to grab things with their hands. Uh, and that word inspired the name for raccoons in Spanish. Fun fact. I'm shocked. I would have thought it would have been the face question or two. the tail. Wow. Question two. Yeah, they do actually have very interesting hands. Anyway, question yeah. two. Uh, Jenny, we're going to you first. A raccoon oh. named Rebecca was going to be a part of Thanksgiving dinner at the White House until the president decided uh, he was more interested in her as a pet than as dinner. Which president was it? Was it A, Calvin Coolidge, B, FDR, C, Lyndon Johnson, or D, Richard Nixon? Old Dick, Dickie Nick, Dickie Nicky. Wait, I'm sorry. They were going to eat the raccoon? They were going to eat the raccoon. What on earth? Oh, all right. <laughs> um, Calvin Coolidge, FDR, Lyndon Johnson, or Richard Nixon? Uh, my gut says Calvin Coolidge because it seems like FDR forward, people wouldn't be in even considering eating raccoons for Thanksgiving dinner. So I'll say Calvin. Uh, Calvin. I'm going also. I'm also Phillip. going with Calvin Coolidge. Uh, I think you know this side of Davy Crockett. I, I don't think raccoons are in for a, <laughs> for a, for uh. festive. Uh, places of, of dinner. So I that's about the oldest I could go. I, I cannot see Richard Nixon. Oh, yes, give me give me those hands. You know, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> what? Well, it is true that, uh, like, that raccoons over that. Were, were once not uncommon on a dinner table. Uh, you are right. It is Calvin Coolidge. He is the the oldest of these four presidents. Uh, yeah, he he pardoned this raccoon instead of Good. eating it. So, Good for you, Rebecca. Rebecca. Good for you as a pet. Good for Rebecca, indeed. And and apparently they used to like take walks through the gardens together. Rebecca oh, and what? Calvin. That's yeah, so I know. cute. Yeah, very cute. I want indeed. the biopic. Get me the biopic now. But just so you guys know, the, uh, Calvin Coolidge was only uh, two, like uh, he was succeeded by uh, Herbert Hoover and after that was FDR. So he wasn't that long before FDR. So there you go. Okay, question three. Buzz mm. in with your name, please. This is a quickie. <clears throat> True or false, there okay. are raccoons in Europe. Jenny. Jenny. I am going to say False. I think raccoons are primarily North American creatures, right? They're not from, I don't think they exist anywhere else. I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Philip, what say you? You are incorrect. What? Sorry to say. Yeah. Sorry to say. No, they, they are not native to Europe, but they are considered an invasive species in Europe after people brought them back for like fur farms. Interesting. And then they escaped, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they are they are considered a nuisance and a an invasive species in uh, Central and Eastern Europe. Question four, so no one got a point there. It's currently tied at one point apiece. Two questions left. Question four, captive raccoons have been known to live for over 20 years. How long do they live in the wild? A, mm. one year. B, two to three years. Wow. C, four to eight years. Or D, nine to 15 years. Oh, we'll go to uh, Philip first. Wow, that is drastic and on both ends of the spectrum. Because I was going to say, I thought you were going one, two, three, four. And what a, what a drastic difference that would be. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with two years. So B, two to three years? B, two to three. That sounds about, that sounds about right. Okay. Jenny. 
I would say something a little higher. I, I've my very limited knowledge of raccoons. I have a gut feeling that they are very. They like to hide. They're very protective. They don't get into a lot of trouble besides scavenging through trash cans or facing predators. But I will say option C. Four to it was four to eight years. Four to eight years. You guys have uh, have differed for the first time. One of you is correct. Unfortunately, it is Philip. They only live two to three years. Very sad. Ah, yeah, baby. Philip, you take a I was narrow, so confident. narrow lead. Going yeah, here's the thing. Who who is question. the who is the raccoon taking on in the animal kingdom? Who can they beat? They can beat a banana peel. They're, they're, there's no way that they're living eight Bears? or nine Raccoons years on the sun of leash. They're vicious, Raccoons but they're not taking vicious. anybody down with them. And they're very they, clever. Anyway, yeah. well, on the subject of raccoons dying, <laughs> in many areas, hunting is one of the leading <laughs> ca- leading causes of death for raccoons. What is the other leading cause? A poison. B inter like in within the species conflict c disease or d vehicular injury uh jenny we go to no, you i should go first because it's uh, the last one right yeah sorry philip yeah. we go to you first i'll go with the letter c i think that they they are nasty to one another i think that they've got a lot disease? of thanksgiving oh Wait, no, no, no. Uh, you, mean, do you mean option B? So, B. so you want to do yeah. B. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I was thinking the conflict. Yeah, the Thanksgiving conflict and dinners around those those uh, vermin families seems to be really at a high for me. <laughs> uh, I have a, uh, my gut feeling is also the same answer. So I will say B. J- Jenny, just so you know, you can't win if you pick the same answer. <sighs> Fine. Okay, let me pick something different. Uh, I will so, go you with want the options again. Or are you yes, please. A poison, B in species conflict, C disease, or D vehicular injury. I'm gonna say vehicular injury. And you'll be glad you did because you got it right. Vehicular injury is the correct answer. Oh, well done. Oh, yeah, dang. That's it's a good, very good sad, stuff. sad thing to say, actually. <laughs> but yeah. Vehicular but you got it right. One of the two. <laughs> but you got it right. <laughs> it's very sad. Hunt, hunting <laughs> and vehicular injury. <laughs> Poor raccoons. Oh no. Okay. Well, that means it's two to two, and we have a tiebreaker. <gasps> tiebreaker. Ooh. Yeah, ooh. We haven't had one in a. We haven't had a good tiebreaker in a while. According to Wikipedia, raccoon body weight ranges from five kilograms to what? Jenny goes first. This is uh, closest wins. Yeah, Jenny, you can Five go first. kilograms uh, to what? Five kilograms options? is 11 pounds. If you give me the answer in pounds, I will convert it, but I will be mad at you all the while. <laughs> um, 11 well, pounds or five kilograms is the low end. What mm-hmm. is the high end? I. How fat do these <laughs> raccoons get? I'd say they get pretty thick. Uh, let's say I can't convert. I don't know kilograms that well. I'm so sorry, David. I'm going to be pounds, annoying then. and say pounds. I'm going to go with 25. Oh, darn 25 you, Jenny. Darn pounds. you. That was right where I was going. Oh. <laughs> For all of our um, <clears throat> European listeners uh, out there, 25 pounds is 11.36 kilograms. Oh, okay. That's gonna be my. What I was gonna say. I was gonna try to say ten kilograms, but I'm glad I was. Hmm. I was right. The question becomes: Is there such a thing as a bodybuilder raccoon or <laughs> a morbidly obese raccoon that like breaks branches? That it was like recorded and was like, okay, this is the extreme level. Is there a swole or a or a really fat raccoon? Is the question. That is the question. That is the question. I think to go double, double the low end. <sighs> Darn you, Jenny! Darn you! Darn you! Darn you! Sorry. I'm go- I'm gonna I'm gonna give Jenny the the obesity, and I'll I'll go twenty four and a half pounds. <laughs> so, but so about about eleven kilos. Kilos, yeah, yeah. We have a winner. Raccoon body weight ranges from five kilograms to twenty six kilograms. Oh, that's a chunk. I that know, thing. right? I oh know they thick, they grow thick. Yes, I don't know how or why or by what means they get to twenty six kilograms, and how some of them stay five. I think this might be slightly different 
breeds of raccoon that range in this size. But uh, but yeah, 26 kilograms. So Jenny is the winner here. Yeah. Shockingly, Woo! coming from behind as she's known to do. Oh, this is brutal. Congratulations, Jenny. Thank you. Make your best raccoon sound, Jenny, since you won off of the raccoon back and, and fluff. <laughs> I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> we'll see if it's accurate. <laughs> and with that victory, Jenny propels herself to a three and two record. Meanwhile, I sink to a dastardly, depressing one in five record. Ugh. Well, that slaps time. Uh, we here are going to be bringing you some uh, some little bit of media or entertainment that we enjoyed this week. And, uh, and honestly, I haven't found any new songs this week. I have watched two films this week. One of them was Guardians of the Galaxy, which I will not slap. And the other one was stand-up comedy, a new stand-up comedy special on Netflix from John Mulaney. And I watched oh. the whole thing, and it kind of was not very good like i didn't laugh at all which is very sad to say because i really like john mulaney but anyway so i'm gonna give you a song it's an oldie but a goodie and it's uh it's a little bit nostalgic for for some people my age uh misery business by by paramore (laughs) i have a whole playlist now of of nostalgia punk uh, alternative rock songs from like the early 2000s and this one of them so misery business by paramore That slaps. You know, I haven't been able to find anything new because I'm actually, (laughs) I've been going through old That Slap suggestions, whether it's uh, Jake Corling's new Paramore album that he suggested, and I I have it on that and discovering, uh, and Jenny's last week's edition, which has been a pleasant find of Victoria (gasps) Monet, or maybe it was two weeks ago, but regardless, uh, I've been listening and I'm shocked on how much I love it. Um, So in absence of those things that have already been taken and things that I've been discovering this week, I thought, you know what, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, I'm not going to put it on that slaps. But of course, what does it take? What is it? What does it inspire that realistically we can put on that slaps that just is undeniable slappage? Come and Get Your Love by Redbone. It undeniably slaps. It's a great song. And again, when you're thinking of Guardians of the Galaxy, I dare say that that's probably amongst the top three identifiable factors and probably one of the songs that I do now associate with it. So come come and get your love by Redbone. Guys, it slaps. Well, I'm bringing you another song this week for That Slaps. Um, This time, let's talk about a song that basically is a musical version of A Blanket of Warmth. The artist Lennon Vanderdoes is a wonderful artist I discovered a little while ago at a at an event in Phoenix. Uh, they, they play a lot of very calming guitar music, and they often duet with some fabulous vocalists. Go listen to their latest release, Gold. It came out on April 21st, and it's this very calming, sunny work that I love listening to when I'm trying to meditate or relax after a long day. Go check out Gold by Lennon Batter Does and featuring Helen Morris. That slaps. As we bring our episode to a close, we have some thank yous we want to dish out. So first of all, to Jake Corlang and Cass and Crossland for the music on the show. We love you guys and we thank you so much. Thanks to Ryan Ardell. And thank you to Josh Hans for all the audio bits you you hear throughout the show. And lastly, thank you to you, the listener. We really appreciate you tuning in each and every week. Uh, So check us out. uh, Check all the episodes that you might have missed down back in the catalog. Uh, There's a lot of great stuff back there. So uh, so enjoy us on your on your road trip or in the shower or on your runs. We would greatly appreciate uh, your attention as we talk nonsense. Anyway. Find us on Instagram at the three tents and recommend us to your friends. We're out on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, just about everywhere where you find podcasts, except for Pandora, because get out of this galaxy, Pandora. Aw, honey, do you see that raccoon in the backyard going through our garbage? Aw, what a cutie. (gasps) Wait, in the woods behind him. 
There's a bear! There's a bear staring at him, licking his lips! Oh, you gotta open the door! Open the back door! Honey, open the f***ing door!